that it is important for us to be grounded, to know who we are. When women don't know who they are, they get lost, subsumed in their husbands. We have been raised to believe that when we get married, we just do what our husbands want. You and I know that that's a fallacy. And that's why many women are not happy. You can't say because you got married, suddenly you have been lobotomized. Yeah. Your brain has been taken up and put somewhere in a jar. <laughs> but when you look at our country, all the men, all the successful people, who raised them? Women. Women. Women are clever, but unfortunately we're also dishonest. Society has told us that we must be submissive to our men. And sometimes we want to conform to society and we like to submit to our men. Whereas you have your own ideas. You can't run past them because... I'm going to say another thing, why it's so sad to think that uh, you've got a head of the family. This is very sub uh, subversive, what I'm saying. Possibly revolutionary. Men like to think of themselves as head of heads of family. I think it's a load of cult wall myself. A man who doesn't have a strong woman behind him is nothing. <coughs> they say uh, the neck is stronger than the head. I don't care which way they put it. I just think they're subversing the women by telling them, I go to many weddings and wish, you must respect your husband and you must kneel down and feed him and put his slippers somewhere mm -hmm. while he comes home and takes the paper and watch the arsenal or whatever. And you have worked yourself out completely out. And then when it comes to bed, he says, how about it? <laughs> he still wants to how about it. And we acquiesce to this. And instead of coming up and saying who you are, you then say you have a headache. Okay. He's not going to lift a hand to bring that thing to the table. Because a man is not expected to do that. Who raised them like that? You did. Whereas the world is a better place if, in, if you women can use your talent. And that doesn't mean that you won't have a good marriage. But if you go home and you start being aggressive, in the same way as I told you about people want to do something, there's no reason to be aggressive at all. Uh, go and take it yourself now. Uh, I am not, no. You know, you, you know. So instead of saying, darling, everything you can say, look, it's called pillow talk in the bed. When you are relaxed and in bed, sleep up. It would be nice if you could raise your children. You know your husband, your husband is your firstborn son. Do you know that? Yes. You don't know that. When you start, it's older than you and you're coming. Give, give yourselves three or four years. You dominate him. It's the way of the world. That's how God made it. Because your head is cool. You are looking at everything. He's going ga 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 everywhere. Being the man. You are the mothers, the mom, your super mom. 
So pillow talk, <coughs> help me like this, help me like that. Don't dictate anything to him. Even if he's not a man, if you want me to do something and you come and start lecturing me, I'll tell you where to go and jump off. <laughs> so you don't do that. Like the lesbian who wants to cuddle you and everything, sweetheart. Oh, uh, I don't do that, you know. It's going to be. Then if you slap her and everything, or you start getting worried and getting tense about it, that he touched me, and that's another thing. Oh, you touched, she touched me? She, no. She's your sister now. Only she's batting for the other side. Don't judge her. She may be a very good, useful person to you, actually. So don't judge her sexuality. Look for the person behind mm. all that nonsense. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Look for her. Be her sister. So, for our husbands, you try telling them. It's dishonest of your friends to be running around. These are people who had dreams when you were all in Yeah, to be running around. Part of it is intellectual laziness. <laughs> it's easier to just hide behind somebody, even if that person is abusing you. You feel, comf you feel comfortable that <laughs> the, the devil you know needs. <laughs> but you shouldn't be harboring any devil around. You should be harboring angels. So here I right, I'm sitting in front of you. I've had my cake and I've eaten it. I'm married, very happy. Well, I still consider my husband's been dead 24 years, but I still consider myself married. Do you see do you see the paradox? Talking about being faithful or whatever. I'm faithful to myself, man. I'm a married woman, and there are certain things that a married woman shouldn't do. Whether you have a husband, I'm not doing it for the husband. I'm doing it for, the, for myself and the institution. So, don't hide behind anybody. Be who you are. We are dishonest by wanting to, be, to play little women. You know you are not little anything. You are big, big people, big minds, creating this world, creating a whole country, creating a whole community, creating families. Admit it, but you don't have to be arrogant about it. But you must, uh, you must accept and acknowledge and recognize your importance in the, in, the, in the mix. You must acknowledge your own importance. It's not about being arrogant. So I work like this at international level. I don't go to parties, I don't do whatever everybody is doing. My home is my haven. That's how I worked it. Because I live there. It's not my husband's house, it's our house. It's where I retire after I work so I can cook. And I enjoy cooking. And I'll set the table. Because that's when we meet and he and I love mine. I will sit and cook something that's, uh, uh, that we both enjoy. My husband couldn't boil an egg if he saved his life. But the things he could do, he would do. And he used to say that, you know, he wasn't a good cook. I was a good cook. He liked my cooking. You see how he was flattering me. And let's go out to eat. Let's what can they cook there that will taste as well as what you do. It was a lovely marriage. So I come back, put my briefcase down, running good businesses, because this is my home, this is my kingdom. Uh -huh. It's not a chore. This is where he and I meet and co-mingle and coexist. And I set the table. What I couldn't do, he's setting the table and everything. He could make coffee and everything. And if I was out later, and he hears the gate opening, my husband is able, but he, he knows what Gary, or what that Jebu Gary was. He will put that in a hole for me, ice water, and meet me at the door. Take and drink. 
He supported my career. I wish everybody had a husband like mine. He was my champion. Angels gave I think it got me to a stage where he thought, well, I could manage, and it went. That's what I tell myself. And he left. He says, yes, you can pick up the gun. And therefore, I took up the gun plate, determined that I would never let him down, because this was a journey we started together. You have to be partners with your husband. So when you are in bed, make time to talk to one another about your dreams together. I don't know if anybody remembered Wins Against My Soul. The basis of that. Yeah. Sam Loku. Yeah. The basis of uh, the drama between uh, Tom and Dejo was that they had sat down and planned and everything, and then he was having an affair. The wife was furious. What happened to our plans? I wish they were, I wish we can do that thing again for people to see what what happens to the dream between us. That they was telling the husband about the, the irresponsibility of rushing running around. We were building a home and we had dreams and you're doing that. The wife's doing her own thing and everything so we can build an empire. <coughs> There's nothing wrong with you wanting to be yourself and still have a happy home. I had that because I knew that my home was my, what do you call it? Uh, my, my thing, yes. That's where, that's the only thing. The, the screaming and shouting, the fame and everything will come to nothing. If you cannot come home to a house, where your husband is full affection for you and respects you and, and all that. Charge yourself for the next. Yeah, and reach. <laughs> so all the adulation and everything would be nothing if you did not have your home. The people don't know that. That's why they think there's a competition between their careers, uh, their personal uh, ambitions, and, uh, and home. In truth, of course, I divorced a man in England, a Nigerian, in the 60s because he was studying accountancy and I was working, studying at night and working. And, and he didn't want me to be going to night school and everything because he said he was studying for both of us. And I said, you can't study for me. <laughs> so I, I go from England, I come home, my partner work by the Wali, and they say what happened. I say my husband that studied for both of us. <laughs> and it was uh, it was tense because they are almost cool. A Lagos girl, they are headstrong, didn't want to listen to whatever it is, because there were many like like that who obeyed, loved and obeyed their husband. That's why I said it's dishonest. I sat and just worked and came home and were having babies and everything. And I said, no, I must study. Yes. And you know what happened? Thereafter, when the, these people finished, they came home at the Ikeja Airport then. We didn't have Murtala Mohammed Airport then, Ikeja Airport. That's where they were, with the two, two or three children that they have, they will surrender the wife and the children to her parents because now he's become a big lawyer, a big accountant, and she doesn't fit him anymore. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this then. So <coughs> when our contemporaries were coming back, that's what happened. So they spent three or four years serving their <coughs> husband, being good wives, and not really doing something to improve themselves for their own personal growth, as I was saying. Mm -hmm. Your personal growth is just as important to the family as his. It's even more important because, you see, when you are 
educated and skillful and whatever in what you're doing. You will pass all these skills to your children. You're raising a better society. So it is incumbent on you to be sure that you do something about yourself, about your personal growth. You're not harming anybody. And anybody who thinks you're harming them by wanting to develop yourself, as I said, when I decided, when I parked out of that man's house, you are not my husband. When I moved out, his family thought maybe I went with another man, and then they found out that I was just going to night school, running from night school to this, that, and the other. And that's how I lived my life all, all my life. Learning something or the other. So they all came and knocked at my door one evening and came to ask, why did I leave? I never had a fight with him. I just said, eh, okay. When he qualified and everything, I sent him to school, he qualified and everything. I packed my bag. I had a good job. I was developing. I was really growing in spite of him. But it was all fight and everything. So and I said, what happened? He said, you didn't fight. I said, no, you didn't fight. Then why did you leave? I said, because he's not my husband. And, it, I, and that's how I felt about it. A husband would want, would want to with the progress of his wife. Will at least acknowledge I had had some dreams and try and encourage me. But if he said no, and he would be beating me, I said, well, this ain't my husband. It was the best thing I did in my life. My mother said, ah, you cannot, you know, you, vote, you cannot. I said, but there, here, I'm there. And I, I know what, I'm looking at what my life's going to be in the future. So have your plans. Focus on your plan. Don't hurt anybody. Don't be headstrong to anybody. Don't be arrogant. Don't be aggressive to anybody. It's got nothing, they got nothing to do with your plans. And you don't have to have any fight with them, but be focused on what you want to do. And men don't like, well, actually men like...